Mickey, to my last question in some ways, uh, many viewers watching us tonight um, who are by no means familiar with the, uh, with the nuances of the different groups concerned or is the Islamic terrorism involved, but they will be sitting there saying, are we powerless to do anything against this, whether it's Brussels or Paris or um, Jakarta or now uh, Bangladesh? Are we just powerless? Well, that's a great question. And if the mighty United States and the French and the Belgians and the UK, if they can't bring a halt to this, what do we expect out of countries like Bangladesh that don't have the resources, don't have the ability, and have political reasons why they don't want to acknowledge that this is either ISIS or Al-Qaeda or one of the extremist Islamic groups? And that sounds kind of familiar to what the U.S. policy is. Let's don't mention them by name and give them too much credit. Tom French, it's always good to have your perspective. Please don't go too far away. As developments happen during the course of the evening, we're going to need uh, you more. We're going to need you more and more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, allow me to bring you up to date with the recap that's happening now. A CNN stringer in the region says that 30 Bangladesh naval commandos are now on the scene. Although the police have said the hostage takers have made no demands so far, AMAC, which is an ISIS media branch, is claiming responsibility. Now, AMAC is you know, the, the sort of place where one would hear the claim of responsibility, but whether it's a genuine claim is, of course, is still um, up for grabs and is by no means certain. Whilst those, what are those commandos looking at? Well, they're looking at a situation where gunmen are holding 20 people hostage at a bakery. It's in the diplomatic quarter in Dhaka. The cafe owner managed to escape. Uh, he told us that there are six to eight gunmen who shot their way in. In doing so, they uh, killed two policemen. One was an officer in charge of a local station, uh, at a nearby station, and at least 40 are injured by gunshot wounds and shrapnel. The government then threw explosives at the police. So let's go and talk to uh, Charu Lata Hogg, who is on the line now. Um, uh, first of all, tell me, where are you? And, and um, you're, you're, the associate fellow, you're the associate fellow of Asia programs at Chatham House in London. I now know where you are. <laughs> you join us via Skype. Um, thank you. When you hear the sort of facts that we are reporting this evening. What's your initial thoughts? Well, my initial thought is that um, the, the, the fault for this, uh, we do not know who's responsible. We, we have a group who's claimed responsibility, um, the facts of which still need to be determined. But when it, something like this happens, inevitably, the government in question has to look back at how it's responded to such violence in the past. Now, the track record of this particular government, or indeed uh, the, the previous government, the opposition government, the government that is the party that is in opposition now, has not been very good. You know, in terms of we've seen a spate of attacks against bloggers, uh, the media, writers, political activists, and. Um, None have been investigated fully, and a handful of, uh, of those right. have been prosecuted, in fact. So, uh, you see, it is a breakdown in the rule of law. This is an attack on democracy, and the government bears some responsibility. So why, tell us, why would the government not investigate? Again, for those of us not familiar with the internal politics and machinations of the Bangladeshi government versus its opposition, why would they not wish to investigate what have been some of the most brutal murders by axes and knives against uh, professors and just, just ordinary people? Why wouldn't they? Well, it's a very, the, 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 the reason for this, we, one has to look back into the past, into a very unsettled political tradition in, 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 uh, in Bangladesh, which sits between secularism on one hand and uh, increasingly radicalized uh, religious sentiment on the other. So uh, why, would the, why would the Awami League government not respond to a threat of, or, or the rise in an extremist Islam? 
it wouldn't because it has a certain political lobby or a clientele to keep happy because if it doesn't the the the, the lines the fault lines within bangladesh politics become very very clear and marked the the bangladesh national party which is in the opposition at the moment has conventionally been regarded a party which is closely linked to the jamaat e islami and therefore has a predominant control over uh, the population which believes in a more accentuated islamic state while the the Awami League, which is currently in power, has been a more secular party. However, by taking action against those who are attacking secularists, it is also then uh, putting clamping down heavily on uh, on growing Islamic right. sentiments within the country. We'll come back in a moment or three. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for that update, uh, or for putting that into perspective for us from Chatham House. Thank you very much. Um, the situation, uh, as you're gathering now, is extremely complicated. Uh, it is not only complicated um, politically and diplomatically and, if you like, geopolitically. It seems to be this evening extremely complicated on the ground, not least of which now because hostages have been taken and the uh, the, the authorities have not received any demands from them, so we believe. Samina Udas in New Delhi uh, has been reviewing the latest facts since we last spoke to you. What more can you tell us?